Hi, I'm Dr. Adam Fields. Welcome to Innate Life. Innate means inborn. Part of inborn means your own blood. And in fact, there's a treatment that uses nothing but your own blood to help regenerate tissue. In fact, I just had some blood sucked out of me. Uh, we had such a great episode with Dr. Josh Donaldson from Los Gatos, California, talking about ozone therapy that I wanted to get him back and talk about what's called PRP or platelet-rich plasma. Why'd you take all this blood out of me? How much did you take out of me? About 30 cc's. 30 cc's, okay. okay. And, and, and what did you do with it? So we uh, extracted from your vein and then uh, put it through a centrifuge process, which uh, spins it down and separates the whole blood from uh, platelet-poor plasma and platelet-rich plasma and the residual whole blood left. And then we take the final um, solution of the platelet-rich plasma, which is rich in growth factors and cytokines that allows for tissue healing to occur. Um, and we put that right back into cytokines. the joints. So, so wait a minute, cytokines. So, so first of all, we've got massive G-force going on. The blood separates into these layers, right? And you're looking for this middle layer that has this liquid gold, right? Right. That, 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 that has it's the platelet-rich plasma and it has growth factors. It has something called cytokines. But cytokines, don't they cause inflammation? They're inflammatory, yes. They're inflammatory. So you're looking for an inflammatory process because, you know, inflammation isn't always bad, right? I mean, sometimes when I do shockwave therapy on people, I say, don't ice, don't use anti-inflammatories, right. put heat on it, right? Because you want that inflammatory process because it's... It's where healing occurs, right? We think of an inflammation as bad. And generally speaking, from a systemic standpoint um, or a long-term standpoint, it is bad, right? Mm -hmm. But in the case of wound healing, whether it's connective tissue or bone or so forth or skin, mm -hmm. you know, the whole process is done so by way of an inflammatory process. Mm. And so, um, in, in, like in the case of... Um, if you get cut on your skin, right, the whole process of a scab forming mm -hmm. and the tissue approximating back together mm -hmm. is done so um, by way of um, our innate healing inflammatory process. Mm -hmm. And so that is um, done so by way of the growth factors and cytokines in our blood, specifically our uh, platelets, mm -hmm. which triggers that healing response to occur. And that mm. does so in specific areas like uh, bone tissue and our skin because it's highly vascularized. Mm -hmm. um, and we so, make red blood cells in our, in our bone, right? Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that doesn't happen in connective tissue, ligaments, tendons, cartilage, meniscus, labrums, mm -hmm. um, inner vertebral discs and mm -hmm. so forth. And so those areas are more vulnerable to having inefficient healing after an injury mm -hmm. and then suffering degenerative changes, right? And, and so forth. Right. So when someone like they come into my office they're like, oh, that old nagging injury, they've had it forever. I just can't seem to get rid of that shoulder injury or whatever. It's not a bone. Bone is going to heal quickly, right? Six weeks, that kind of thing. But that thing that that baseball player has to take a year off or that that, that basketball player has to take a year off, that's most likely one of these injuries you're talking about. Ligaments, uh, tendons, tendons, cartilage. Cartilage, intervertebral discs, because it's less vascular. Exactly. And right. sometimes it can just take somebody out. Totally, totally. Right. And so we're basically taking that concept of wound healing that happens in those highly vascularized areas in your skin and your bone and um, putting it into areas that need it because they don't get that normal innate healing mechanism mm -hmm. uh, response. I love it. Yeah, it's fantastic. Okay, so so we talk about it with orthopedics. Um, for instance, uh, you know, my knee, right? Mm -hmm. I've got, I've done a lot of mountain biking, etc. Had a knee, it does well, but then every once in a while it's like, oh, it's a little sore. So we're gonna, we're, we're, you know, we're gonna do some PRP on it. Right, we're gonna inject it. And, and how are you gonna do that? Is there, is there a specific method? Um, I know that some, some pro athletes, who, who's done some of this PRP? Because um, don't we have Kobe Bryant did it? Yeah, so it kind Tiger of, Woods. It, it came out about 12, 14 years ago mm -hmm. in it's kind of its infancy. Mm -hmm. And it was um, more tested out, I think, over in Europe first. And that's where, yeah, the likes of Tiger Woods, Kobe Bryant, Dwight Howard, 
to name a few. They flew over there. Flew over to Germany. From it the was, U.S. to yeah. go to Germany to have these treatments done. Yeah. And that was like the Germans are always one step ahead of us, right, mm-hmm. in medicine, right? And this was no different. And so that kind of got popularized there by some of these high profile athletes. And then now it's more mainstream medicine here in the States and has been so for eight to 10 years mm-hmm. um, after it was you know, more accepted um, in the uh, outpatient orthopedic realm. And you can still, even with um, inpatient, if somebody's getting uh, surgery done, a lot of more progressive um, orthopedists now are doing PRP um, at the end of their procedures mm. to help stimulate, you know, quicker, efficient healing. So they're doing arthroscopic surgery. Uh, they finish. They get the person's blood. They put it back into the joint exactly. to stimulate yeah. it. I heard they're even doing it in eye surgeries. Even yeah, right. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Right, it's helping regenerate tissue. It's yeah. incredible. So you're gonna do what in my knee? We're gonna, we're gonna do what in my knee. PRP. Yeah. yeah. So, so how are you going to inject that? What, what's your strategy? Why would you inject a certain way? Is it a certain strategy for one joint and versus another joint? Right. So yeah, I kind of come up with my own algorithm as to where I go with what, whatever the patient needs. And that's considering, you know, how long has the injury been there? You mm-hmm. know, the extent of the injury, is it just a, 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 a stretched or, you know, partial grade one, um, sprain or strain, mm-hmm. or is it more of an aggressive injury where it's a you know grade two mm-hmm. sprain or strain? Um, and you know how motivated the patient is, you know, mm. and you know I, I even you know consider their pocketbook in the situation because there's there's different um, tiers of regenerative medicine uh, injections that we do here: prolotherapy and prolozone being the first tier, and then mm-hmm. PRP. Um, is this next tier up, which is a little more expensive, a little more expensive, but it's, it's more effective in more complicated cases, like a complicated rotator cuff tear, meniscus tear, um, things like Mm -hmm. that, or, um, injuries that just don't, aren't responding to normal prolotherapy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll maybe start them there on a couple of treatments and if they don't respond, bump it up to PRP. Right. Right. So I've actually also done where, where Dr. Josh will do a PRP injection, and then he, they come over and get shockwave therapy from me, and it seems to help the process for some laser therapy. Absolutely, or like that. yeah, it's good. It's been to wonderful. Throw all kinds of things out. Throw of it. it at it. Yeah. Right. So, um, so anyway, so so with a joint like the knee, you're, you're you're putting that liquid gold, I call it, into the joint, and then it causes an inflammatory response, which stimulates a healing process and might heal, help heal a, a meniscus or it's not obviously a cruciate ligament complete tear, it's not gonna heal, but um, you know, some arthritis or something like that. Is that yeah, right? yeah, it's a more uh, profound, efficient healing response than you would get with just traditional prolotherapy. Mm-hmm. Traditional right. prolotherapy being? Like a dextrose base injection. Okay, so tra- right. traditional prolotherapy is when they're just gonna put some sugar into the joint, and the sugar is going to, I believe, you can correct me if I'm wrong, irritate the insides and cause a healing process also. Yeah, the, the dextrose acts as an irritant to kind of trick the body to think that there's an injury there where you get um, kind of like this healing response. Like you, uh, it's like, whoa, inflammation, we need, to, we need to send inflammation in here that stimulates fibroblasts and collagen production. Um, and so it's good, in a lot of cases, we still use that right. as a primary treatment, and some patients do really great with just that, but sometimes Wouldn't they need more. You know, more, right? Especially yeah. for these professional athletes and things like that, exactly. we go more. So what about like, um, what do you think about like somebody, you know, taking collagen supplements or bone broth or something like that along with it? Do you think that makes any sense? Absolutely, or? yeah. I mean, any way, in any time you can you know, further facilitate healing for, you know, greater efficacy and mm-hmm. completeness. I think it's, um, I think it's the way to go. We mm-hmm. have people take uh, peptides like BPC-157. We'll have them do um, other connective tissue supportive uh, oh, supplements. Wonderful. So you're giving us some that. building blocks so the body has some building blocks yeah. to regenerate things. Yeah. So if someone has Give me a, a like a for instance a treatment protocol like for, for for something. Let's say somebody has a, I mean, how many times will you do PRP? Yeah, so um, it it really just depends. I've done 
you know, some cases where I thought I was going to do three rounds of PRP on that person for like a epicondylitis, tendonitis on an elbow. Um, and it was good with just one. I, mm. Case in point myself, I thought I was going to need two or three and I one did the trick and I was 100% and wow. within like six or eight weeks. Great. Other people, I've done four or five rounds and it's usually six to eight weeks apart. Um, again, it goes back to, you know, the everybody's um, different did you actually yeah. inject it yourself like no that? i had a colleague do it you had a colleague yeah. do it i've done other areas myself with regular prolo but not prp i'm, I'm a little chicken <laughs> good job so there's also some really exciting new ways to use this platelet rich plasma and uh, i have a friend that came into my office to get treated and she looked like she had you know gotten you know she was attacked by a hellraiser or something what is that? What is this thing on the face? PRP facial. PRP facial. They call it. Uh, well, the the tag word uh, that is used by some people, but um, that's kind of coined with the treatment that I don't use for um, oh, infri- infringements. Right? It's it, some people call it the vampire facial. The vampire facial. You've um, heard about it. But it's it. a PRP facial on Same Goop. Thing. You've heard about it on you know Madonna, whoever. Somebody yes. Kim Kardashian, I think, was the one. Kim Kardashian. Sorry, it was one yeah. of them. Right. Yeah. So we're basically taking the sub same substrate. We take your blood, spin it down, concentrate it, isolate the platelets, use that, which is doing basically the same thing and helping stimulate collagen and connective tissue, mm-hmm. as we were in a shoulder or a hip or a knee, and using that same concept and putting it in the skin on your face. On the face, and, and it's stimulating collagen. Yep, yeah, so we'll do it with a uh, microneedling technique as well as actual injections into like deeper frowns and wrinkle lines around the eyes. Incredible. Yeah. Okay, and, and wh- how deep is that microneedling? How deep does that go? Uh, like var- a half a millimeter Varying degrees of a half a millimeter up to two millimeters. Up to two millimeters, mm-hmm. and yeah. you're just, you're putting hundreds of holes in somebody's face that could be as deep as two millimeters <laughs> yeah. with with their blood. Yeah, it's in certain areas, right? It's different, like the eyes is a lot thinner. If you get around further with a thicker skin, then you can go uh, deeper. And then also into the scalp too, which is like two to two and a half millimeters. Um, for the hair. For hair rejuvenation, yeah. Oh, So for ma- even maybe someone who's got advanced hypothyroidism, they lost a lot of hair, male pattern baldness, mm. Mm. Uh, alo- alopecia, you know, autoimmune alopecia. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can, you know, even I've done it a couple times for men in their beard. They've had a little spotchy. Uh, ah, they patches. wanted that full masculine beard. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. And, and it works great. I'm on my own testimonial. I was fairly thin and it's, I've done three rounds and it's worked. Nice. Bit. Nice. And how, gotten worse. you went deep. You went deep. You went two millimeters so deep. Microneedling as well as injections into the uh, scalp as well. It, did it hurt when you had done? Did you wear some? It's deep? it's uh, it's not pain free. Yeah, it's uh, two millimeters. No hundreds joke. of holes in your head. Yeah, I mean we use the topical anesthetic. Oh, okay. okay. Which helps, but it's Don't still, talk to me anymore. It's then. still painful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we're also using PRP. I know that um, I get, I, get, I heard of it in. Texas, but I don't know if we do it here for sexual function. Yeah, sexual optimization. Mm-hmm. Sexual optimization. That's a new word to me. Yeah. Sexual optimization. Yeah, Feel that for a second. Yeah, people. look it up. It's a thing. It's a thing with yeah. PRP. PRP for the genitalia. For men who are having uh, erectile dysfunction mm-hmm. or Peyronie's disease, mm. um, you can do the, again, the same substrate of PRP mm-hmm. going right into um, the uh, right there. genitalia mm-hmm. there. Along the shaft. And a lot the of head. different shots. It's usually about six to eight. Six to eight. Kind of along the shaft, but it has worked. I haven't done a ton of them, mm-hmm. but um, in the you know a couple dozen patients that I have, it's worked great and got their um, intimate life back it's with amazing. their partner. I mean, some yeah. poor guy is he's, he's suffering. He wants to have you know a normal sexual life and. You're helping bring them back. I yeah. mean, what a beautiful, wonderful thing. Yeah. Yeah. And for women too, um, they can also do it to the genitalia um, in and around uh, the urethra for urinary incontinence, which is a big thing for oh, interesting. a lot of postpartum women or el- elderly women. Mm. Um, and then into the uh, tissue around the vagina, it just helps invigorate and um, 
yeah, a get, lot of women get them back to being able to climax and have an orgasm and just, again, enjoy uh, intimacy again with their partners. It's, it's an amazing tool. You're doing God's work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Keeping marriages together. Right. right? There or you go. Like that. There you yeah. go. So, and then um, there's a different technique with shoulders because it's, um, you, you, where you, you, you stab over and over again, right? Or, or certain, you, you pepper it. I think you called and it. And shoulders? Or, or, oh. Or, oh. or Achilles or something oh, like that. I mean, yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Kind of like technique. what I did to your shoulder a while yes. back. Yeah, yes. I mean, like, you just don't want to do one injection and mm-hmm. done for like a joint. Like the shoulder is a very complex joint. It's multi-axial, oh, ball and socket joint. It's got anterior capsular ligaments, posterior capsular ligaments, rotator cuff tendons, mm. the AC joint. You know, Incredible range of motion. Yeah. So let, let me tell you my, these guys my story yeah, for a second. That so, was one of the first things I worked on with It was you, right? incredible, yeah. right? So I had, uh, my brother's a chiropractor. He would adjust it. Obviously, I'm a chiropractor. And, and it would just clunk. It was so loose. It was just sloppy. And, it, you know, I'd be in the car after getting an adjustment, just clunk. And I even had some decent exercises, but the exercises that I give uh, now on the videos are incredible. And I do that to, to maintain it. But I went to Dr. Josh and literally, I, it was very painful. Um, I had a little, for the meek. little yeah. Vicodin, a little vodka, and I'd come in all. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, but he went in there and he would pepper it and he would stab it over and it's over. It's a little more methodical than that. Yes, yes, yes. Sorry. There's technique here, people. And, and so, and what's amazing is, I mean, I have no popping, no clicking. I'm doing my chaturangas. That's I'm out tight. there. Stable. I'm surfing. I mean, it's incredible. And it's been years and years. It's, it's Seven years, probably. Yeah, it's yeah. been probably seven years. I do do the rotator cuff exercises, the scapular stabilization exercises. You know, if I went a month with that, without that, I don't know what would happen. But this was is amazing. It was like, a, it was another... This is why I'm having this guy. I've had so many miracles in this office. Um, but anyway, so um, it's you're doing orthopedics, you're doing some facial stuff, some cosmetics. some sexual rejuvenation, some cosmetics. Um, it's it's a wonderful tool. Yeah, it it's, it provides a lot. You know, I when I got into PRP because I was doing prolotherapy, and it was like the next step up, and then. Once I heard about the uh, aesthetic cosmetic treatments, I already had all the gear. I just mm-hmm. I did a couple trainings and implemented it in, and uh, it's been great. And you know, it's it's we've had a lot more women do it than men. Mm. Um, you know, right uh, for obvious reasons, I, mm-hmm. I guess you'd say. But mm-hmm. um, they've all been oh very the happy. facials as far as the facials go. The facials and for females having um you know genital reproductive or not reproductive Mm -hmm. but um incontinence issues and Mm -hmm. so forth Mm -hmm. they are quicker to jump how is that how does somebody get that information i mean is that on your website services you know uh i I believe so yeah Mm. um amazing double check but i'm I'm pretty sure we have all our aesthetic (laughs) treatments definitely the facials i don't know about the uh, what about the incontinence uh it should be oh wonderful yeah oh that's great you're helping people I love it. So if chiropractic didn't exist, I would be a nature path for sure. I mean, this is fascinating. And you're outside the whole spectrum of, you know, the medical insurance thing where they're kind of telling you what to do. So you're you have a lot of freedom in what you do. Yeah. Yeah. That's a we're a cash based practice. We don't take insurance. There's pros and cons to that, of course, for right. um, a lot of people. But um, you can't a lot of these treatments you can't get in the normal traditional conventional medical setting right and these are things that work you know mm-hmm. like what else is someone going to do for ed aside you know get on cialis or mm. viagra or something which mm-hmm. you know has other side effects or mm-hmm. you know in, incontinence for women and you don't want botox to get a facial and you know right it's toxic substance it being is toxic. put into your right. face and look like plastic mm-hmm. plastic woman mm-hmm. um, or man um, right so yeah, it's they're great natural means of treatment. They fall into the you know umbrella of natural alternative therapies, and it just has worked right. well it, in you're my just, practice. You're just cajoling something out of the body that is already there, and getting it to produce its own collagen using your your own innate healing. Mechanisms. I love it, and yeah. that's what we're all about here. 
Thanks so much for being with us for another episode. It's exciting. Let's see who we're going to be with next.